many of you will think and say to yourself that your eyes are open. You believe that you can see. You believe that you are able to comprehend and understand life. And so God is trying to tell us something different. God is trying to help us to understand that our eyes are truly closed, are spiritualized. God is trying to help mankind understand purpose, trying to help mankind understand identity, trying to help mankind understand destiny. But the thing is, we have been taught by the people of this world that our destiny is whatever we make it. And that is not a reality. The reality is that God has already created your life and he's created for a specific purpose. And he wants you ultimately to fulfill the goodwill concerning why he created you. And so what we have to do is we have to seek God so that he can help us to come into the reality of who we are and what he created us to be and do. And so it's vital that we come to the one that is able to awaken us to that reality. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ comes to awaken people to the identity in which the Creator created them for. But the thing is, because of the condition of our hearts, we don't want to truly be open to what God has designed us to be. Because it's not an easy task. It's not easy to deny the feeling good things of this life so that we can really walk in the identity that God ultimately wants us to walk in. Many of us, we love the luxuries of this life, but we don't realize if we indulge too much, if we do things from a self-gratification perspective, we will ultimately be hindered in reference to the identity that God has created us to be and live out. There is something that God wants you to live out in this world. And so when you resist what God is trying to do in your life, you ultimately make way for your own self-destruction. But God is so merciful that God wants to do specific things in your life to constantly awaken you, to constantly prompt you, to, to do things just like a parent would do. A parent does not want for the child to ultimately do things that are not in the good, good will for that child. So the parent is constantly doing things, constantly doing things in the child's life to try to redirect the child so that the child can fulfill the purpose that the parent ultimately wants for the child. Sometimes the child thinks that he or she knows best. But the thing is, the parent is the originator, the creator, the one that has the responsibility of making sure that the child fulfills the destiny that was created for it. And so we as people have to know that God loves us and God is constantly trying to redirect your focus in life so that you can know who he is and what you were created to do. But we are so infatuated by the temporary things of life that we're not truly living out the design in which we were created for. I'm telling you, the design you were created for. You have to know that God is a God of love that is very patient. He is very patient, like a farmer. God, like a farmer, is very patient, and he wants for people to come to the reality of who they are. And so, like a, like a farmer, God plants seed. God tries to do all sorts of things to bring about fruit in a person's life, because that fruit represents the identity in which he originally created the person to function as. So just like the gadgets that you have in your
your car. You have your, your car itself, or you have uh, your, your TV at home, or you have all sorts of things. And if those things don't function according to the manufacturer's design, then ultimately those things have to be discarded. And so God doesn't want to discard his children. He loves his children. And he finds all sorts of ways to repair, to, to help, to steward his children in the right direction. And so that's what God wants for you. God wants for you. I mean, how many of you have had a device that malfunctions, right? And what you do is you try all sorts of ways to try to correct the device. You try to uh, go inside of it and you try to uh, uh, fix the corrupted parts or you try to do all sorts of things. Uh, you use all sorts of contraptions or you, you watch all sorts of tutorials, you know, to, to help you to correct what it is that's wrong within the device. See, God is doing the same thing with us. See, we have in us a sin nature. And that sin nature or that crime against God uh, perspective that we have leads us to do specific things that are spiritual crimes against God. And so we do that on a daily basis. And so God is pleading with people to truly come to Him so that He can repair the issues that are within us. And some of us think that because our bank accounts are full, because we have a lot of possessions, because we are able to comprehend certain thing, things, that we think that that's a sign that we're blessed. But God wants you to know that unless you have Him, unless you are pleasing to Him, you are not blessed. The blessed are those that obey God. That's the blessed. The blessed are the ones that ultimately come to the fulfilling of the identity that God has ordained them to walk in and live out. That's the blessed. The blessed are the ones that function properly. I'm telling you, look at your devices as I was saying earlier. The, the, the phones, when they function properly, the cars, when they function properly, the, the businesses or the ideas that you concoct in your mind, when they function properly, those are the things that you like, you, you, you are pleased with those things, right? Well, God is pleased when you, as a son or a daughter of God, function in the proper order that he's created you to function. When you listen to him, when you seek him, he doesn't delight that you smoke yourself to death. He doesn't delight that you drink yourself to death. He doesn't like that you be bombarded in your sleep and you're attacked by all sorts of demons, but yet you don't know they're demons because you don't believe in demons, but the fact that you don't believe in demons doesn't mean that they don't exist. God wants you to know that you don't have to be tormented in your sleep. You don't have to be a person that lives out failure after failure after failure. God wants to renew you. He really does. Just like your parents love you and make provision for you to succeed to a degree, likewise, God wants to do that same thing. But the thing is, you trust in the things of this world over him, and that is not right. We cannot trust. It's like a parent. It's like a parent who invests all of these different things in his children. He invests all of these different things in his children. And what his children does is when his children get of age, they forsake they forsake him. They do all sorts of things that are not in line with what he deems loyalty. They do all sorts of things. And so what God wants us to know in reference to that example is that we have to be loyal to him. We have to be loyal to God. 
We have to be individuals that live out regardless of what stages in life that we are, we must be loyal to God by being obedient to the Word of God. The Word of God is here to help guide us in, into the identity that God has ordained for sons and daughters of God. That's what God wants for you. A, 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 a blessed life, not according to the material things per se, but a blessed life in reference to the identity of God that is forever forming and growing and maturing in you. And because of that, you are what God deems as the in an inheritor of eternal life. God is in the business of handing out eternal life. But do you have that today? God is in the business of handing out eternal life. He's in the business of handing out blessings to those that trust Him over everything. Do you trust God over everything? Does your life reflect that you love God? Does that? Or does it reflect that you love and trust in money? Or you trust in businesses, or you trust in your own intellect, your own ideas about life. God wants to renew the identity of man so men can understand what they were created for and who they are becoming. Who are you becoming? And that's what God is desiring for you to know. You don't have to be a slave to the sinful nature that is within you. You can be a successor, and God wants you to be to succeed. God, how do I know that God wants mankind to succeed? Because God says that He doesn't delight that mankind perish, that mankind is separated from Him or dies eternally. Who doesn't delight that? What God delights is that men turn, repent, come to the understanding that they don't know and that God does know. And because God does know, they seek the God that does know so that they can know. Are you in the know or are you in the don't know? God wants you to be in the know. Do you know or do you not know? God doesn't want you to live in the not know, but live in the know. God is desiring that you be born again. Jesus says, except a man or a woman be born again, he or she cannot see the kingdom of the living God. God is desiring that people see, because without Jesus and without being spiritually awakened, we ultimately are blind. And so God is desiring through His love, through His grace, through His power to transform mankind that we be born again. It's not enough that you were born through your mother's womb. It's not enough. You have to be spiritually awakened through what God is doing through mankind. God is delighting that people be saved. God is delighting that people be saved. God is delighting that people be saved. God bless you. God is delighting that people come to the salvation that he has available for mankind. You don't have to perish. You don't have to be separated from God for all eternity. You can choose life. God bless you. You can choose life. Life is available for mankind. You can be in the know. You don't have to be in the don't know. We have the ability to seek the Creator so that the Creator can open our eyes, open our eyes to the reality of who we are and what He has created us to be so that we can fulfill the very calling that is on our lives. And so that's what God wants for you. God desires that you be born again. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir.
God wants for you to be born again. Awaken spiritually so that your life can produce what it was created to produce. I'm telling you, all of us get frustrated over a corrupted phone. All of us get frustrated over a car that won't start. All of us get frustrated over plans that don't fall through. What do you think God thinks about his own creation? You and I that don't function according to the plan that he created us to function as. What do you think about that? God wants you to function according to the identity that he has created you to function as. Because he delights in his creation. Just like you delight in the possessions that you have. Those possessions are things that should obey you. And so you as a descendant of what God has created, you should also function in the pattern, in the design, in the, 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 the way that God has created for you to function. And that's being obedient to God. That's understanding who Jesus is in reference to your life. That is coming to the Lord Jesus and being saved, no longer having the identity of, of sin corrupting your life, no longer having the elements of this world bombarding you and making you depressed and making you hopeless. There is hope, and that hope is through the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Jesus wants to give you hope. Jesus is handing out hope to those that are oppressed and depressed and think that don't understand life. God wants to. And I'm telling you, if you think you know, then Jesus is not for you. But if you don't know, God wants you to be a part of the group that knows. So come to the Lord Jesus Christ today. We have brothers, sisters here that can help you in understanding the, the, the truths about life, the very things about life that you need to know. God wants to awaken you to those things. Awaken you to the very salvation that he has created you to be a part of. God wants you to be included. Yes, God wants you to be included. And he's made provision for you to be included. He's made provision for you to be in the know. And so, in order for you to be in the know, you must know Jesus Christ. If you know Jesus Christ, then you know peace. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, then you don't know peace. Know peace? Then you cannot enter into everlasting life. God wants to give mankind peace. God wants to give you peace. And it's not a temporary peace in reference to I'm comfortable because I have a, the amount of whatever I need to have. No, no, no. God wants to give you an eternal peace. Eternal peace is more valuable than the temporary luxuries of this life. The temporary peace that we get from the, the, the very small increments of peace that we have on this, in this life. God wants to give you a supernatural, eternal peace. And that eternal peace is that you have everlasting life with Him. But not the temporary satisfactions of this life that are forever fleeting, forever dissipating, leaving. These things are not consistent. And we want, everyone wants consistency. Everyone wants consistency so today harden not your heart come to the Lord Jesus Christ salvation is for you today salvation is for you today I'm telling you it's for you today God loves you Jesus loves you but you must know that you must love him back the way you love Jesus back is you do what he says 
Why? Because he's a good parent. He's a good dad. He's a good leader. He's a good master. He wants for you to know him so that your life can function according to the pattern in which it was created to function. There's a way that you are to function. You know, just like your cars. As I was saying earlier, you love when your cars start in the morning. You love that. You love when your phone works. You love it when things happen according to the pattern in which they were created. And Jesus loves when his creation, when his people function according to his word, function according to why they were created, function according to the love of God that he's embedded in them, and not function according to fornication, not function according to drunkenness, not function according to cursing, not function according to listening to bad music, not function according to the things of this world, but function according to the love of God and the truth of God that he delights that men and women understand and live out. God wants that for you. God wants that for you. But the truth is, there is something working in you that does not want that for you. There is something in you that does not want. May your eyes be open today.